it's Natasha and thank you so much for joining me today. We are going to be doing a really fun technique today. In fact, this is one of those techniques that I can easily get carried away with. Now, I don't know about you, but I do have a selection of Nouveau drops that I keep and I honestly find I pretty much use the black, the white, the silver, the gold and the clear the most. So I had these acetate sheets sitting on my desk and I have tried this technique before, but using them on paper. And honestly, I find that the Nuvo drops crack when they dry onto paper when they are applied like this. So that's when I thought I would give it a go with doing it on top of acetate. And this is fun. So I have my Nuvo drops here and I have some stencils. Now any stencils will work. It could be a pattern, it can be a flower, bricks, it could be anything. So have a look through your stash and I'm sure you've got something that will work. If you only have the main colors like the black, the white, the silver that I talked about in the Nouveau Drops, then that's going to work fine too. But I am one of those people who have these Nouveau Drops here and it takes me forever to get through one of these little bottles. In fact, I've never ever finished one and I use them a fair bit. So I felt comfortable doing this and I didn't feel like this was a waste at all. This is just another fun way to use my products. Now there's three different kind of ways that you could apply this. The first way is using a palette knife, which I find the least kind of effective at getting it nice and even. Then I have some old gift cards or just credit cards or plastic cards and they work really well. Then if you have it, you could also use one of these kind of scraper tools. This one happens to be from scrapbook.com, but I know that there are other companies who make them. And I'm going to show you a couple of uh, different tools using these today. So first of all, I found these cards perfect. Honestly, it was really, really easy. And all I do is apply some of the Nuvo drops to the back of the card. I have my stencil placed over top of my acetate. And then all I'm going to do is kind of gently spread it through the gaps of the stencil. And I have got this beautiful design on my acetate. Now, this is so much fun. There is plenty of time to work with this, to kind of shift the color around, to get it nice and even. I found that I didn't want too heavy of an application of the Nouveau Drops. Um, but honestly, you can have a play around and kind of just whatever looks good to your eye. I didn't need very much of them to kind of go quite a long way. And I just spread it out nice and evenly. And I found that the easiest way was to have my acetate and my stencil on a little piece of scrap paper. And then that way I was able to kind of keep turning it around as many times as I wanted to um, without having to shift my project. So now I'm just going to grab the stencil, gently pull it up. And you don't want to kind of muck around with the Nuvo Drops. I would, I had like a big tub of water that I put all of my stencils into. You wouldn't want to leave them for too long. If there's any little bits there that got in the wrong place, then I just scrape them off and we are good to go. This is using just one color. This is the red berry color, I think. And I'm going to put this aside to dry. This looks very, very cool, just like this. But I'm going to move on and show you a technique using a couple of different colors if you want to kind of jazz it up just a little bit. So I have a kind of ready color and an orangey, uh, sorry, a yellowy color. And obviously when these two go together, they're likely to make an orange. So I did make sure that if they were to mix a little bit, it was going to make a pleasant color, which will work well for yellow and red. And I chose to do the yellow just in the center. Honestly, you don't have to be perfect at this. I just kind of did about what I thought was halfway, I guess, half of the stencil, half of the inside of the stencil. And then cleaned off my card and then added some of the red Nouveau drops to the back of it and then went around the outside. At the moment, I'm pretty much trying to keep them separate. I just want to get the Nouveau drops laid down in place. And then once I have everything kind of in the right place, I am going to kind of blend them a little bit. And there's no special technique for doing this. I just kind of started going over top of the yellow a little bit and you can see it start to blend there into the, the red and the yellow and they do create a little bit of an orangey color. I never went for perfect, absolute perfect, but I honestly found these results were very forgiving. So um, I really enjoyed this technique and this one is the one that has two colors. So it looks very cool once you take off the stencil and then that one there is ready to go and I will put this one aside. Because these are such thin layers of Nouveau Drops, I find they dry pretty quickly. Obviously, it is going to depend on uh, which kind of climate you're in, how warm, how cold, how humid, all of these things. Um, so yeah, depends on all of those things, but it didn't take very long at all. 
Here is a gorgeous kind of mandala style stencil and I'm going to pop this one directly in the middle. For this one I'm going to be using three different colours and I'm going to use the big long scraper. So I'm able to just pop down a little bit of each of these colours and honestly I didn't find that this used up my Nuva Drops much at all. Some of these colours have been sitting here for like a couple of years and I figure if I don't use them I'll lose them. So I may as well enjoy them while I've got them and that's what I'm pretty much doing today. Now I've got all three colours there and all I have to do is kind of lay my little scraper down on an angle and you can kind of jiggle it back and forth if you want to get a bit of blending or you can just go straight over. So many different ways and yet this was so easy. You can see that my stencil did leave a strip up the top because my stencil wasn't uh, didn't cover all of the acetate but I am going to cut that off later. If you didn't like it now would be the time to wipe it off but honestly that didn't bother me at all. I guess you could have also done some masking um, to make sure it didn't get the acetate if you didn't want it there. Now I had some leftover on my scraper which I'm not going to waste so I had a scrap piece of acetate here and I'm going to pop this on and use up a little bit more. I didn't have a plan for these scraps of acetate but I feel like I may as well use them if I've got it. So uh, it was really fun to be able to use up those extra little bits. Now I'm going to do the bricks and this time I decided to do a pattern of the blue and the green and if you just go kind of straight across just practice it how many times you want to kind of uh, the angle that you have your scraper at and that way it will apply more or less of the Nuvo drops. Now I kind of went to wiggle it a little bit back and forward so that it blended a little bit but you can of course have it nice and straight whatever works for you and then once you take it off you get this gorgeous design left behind. So I as I said this is a very easy technique to get carried away with <laughs> and I will admit that I did a lot of these. I showed you some on camera and I definitely did more <laughs> but I did have a little bit left over again so I'm just going to pop it down on my piece of acetate and so you can see I'm not quite angling it strong enough and then once I do there's actually plenty of Nuvo drops on there and again I have another little scrap piece for a later date. So I'm going to put these aside and let them all dry and then here are what they look like once they are dry. Now as I said I have tried this technique on paper before and I honestly find that if you move the card around, the paper around, it cracks the Nuvo drops. For whatever reason it does not do this on acetate. So I can bend these and flex these and they stay perfectly without any cracks or anything appearing which is fantastic. So that makes it a whole lot easier to work with. And if I put behind a white piece of card here you can see the awesome design that is left by these cool stencils that we used. I am going to turn one of these into a card for you today, however I feel like sometimes these just really speak for themselves and you just need a very simple design um, and this will stay the focal point. So, so many different options. I went with something I've actually never really done before, I had it in my head um, but I haven't really used this technique before, very very simple to finish off a card. But anyway, here are all the pieces and I think that Mandela one in the middle is potentially my favourite. You could use either side here as well, you could use them Nuvo Drops face up or Nuvo Drops face down depending on what you liked better. But honestly I found like there was not a whole lot of difference um, and not a whole lot of texture because we added a really thin layer. There was a little bit of texture but not, not a, a whole lot at all. I'm just going to trim this down using my trimmer like I would any other piece of paper and it was a little bit hard deciding which pieces that I wanted to cut off. It was a little bit sad but I also knew that I just wanted this to fit nicely on my uh, card base and my card base was going to be four and a quarter by five and a half inches. I originally was going to put that frame on that I have die cut out to the right hand side there but it just covered up too much of my image. Perhaps I can use the bricks inside of that one. So what I ended up doing, I had a rectangle piece of paper uh, just to the side of me, cardstock, and I'm sorry that I'm a little bit off screen here. I clearly forgot that I was zoomed in a little bit and I apologise for that but all I'm doing is cutting all four corners off this piece, uh, this rectangle piece and that will give me little corners just to frame my very striking piece of artwork onto my card front. So this is very simple, you could cut these with scissors as well or you could use um, a little bit of a decorative edge on these with a die or something but honestly this card I kept very very plain and simple. So all I'm doing is adding some foam tape to the back of these and you can see that I have cut the acetate to be slightly smaller than my card base so that when I pop these pieces of foam tape down 
they are going to go right to the very corners and will hold that acetate in place with all four corners. So it will be nice and sturdy. There is no chance of it coming off, but that's all I'm going to do is pop these right into the corners. And this just creates its own little frame without covering up too much of my focal point at all. Now, I am also going to add a sentiment. Again, if you didn't want to cover up this, then you could pop the sentiment inside of the card instead. And I definitely thought about doing that, but I decided to go for a really just small sentiment. And then that way the focus was going to be on the card front and that gorgeous design. Now, when I was thinking about the sentiments that would go on the front, I was trying to look in my stash for some that would work. This one would be really cool because if I stamped it on some acetate or on some vellum, then you would be able to see the pattern through it still. And then the other two in the middle and the left, those are good because they're just small, nice little fine sentiments. And I do think that any of these would have worked. The one bonus about these is that I can pull it out and kind of sit it on top and see how it would look. I wanted this one to be a nice kind of bright, cheerful, happy birthday or enjoy your day or something uh, kind of cheerful. And I just felt like it covered up just a little bit too much. So I ended up putting that one back, although that would be good for another couple of techniques that I have in mind. And I'm just going to go with a simple one here. This is the Word Fragments stamp set. And this is one that I have used time and time again. I'm using that same piece of paper that I cut the corners off. And I'm going to just stamp it a couple of times because knowing me, if I just stamp it once, I will definitely ruin the only one that I stamped when I go to cut it out or something silly like that. So I always kind of stamp two for good luck. And the other one can go in my little pot beside my craft desk. Then I'm using my scissors just to leave a little white border around the outside of that as well. And again, that all ties in nicely to the white that we have on the card front too. Pop it up on a little bit of foam tape, pop this right in the center, and then we are good to go. As I said, I didn't want this to kind of take over the card, but I don't feel like it did at all. So I hope that you enjoyed this technique today and I hope that you give it a go. It is so much fun and I'm pretty sure you probably have all of the supplies on hand in your stash. If you end up giving this a go or you were inspired by this video, I would love to see your creations and the best place to do that is over on my Facebook page. I will leave a link to that down below in the description box. Also, if you are after any of the supplies that I used today, I will also link those down in the description box, mainly just the ones that I can find. Some things I use have been discontinued already, um, so I apologize for that, but everything else should be there and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks, bye!